Hello there, it's Mike. <laughs> Katie. And this is episode 142. What are we talking about this week, Katie? The spoiler side squad. On this week of Cup of Rad. Hey everyone, guess what? It's a special episode coming right at you. It's the Spoiler Squad review. <laughs> Let's see how long he can hold this voice up. We're going to do it for freedom and liberty. I wish I could do a Harley Quinn voice. I have random moments where I can try to do that. But it's mainly just trying to copy s- specific lines. Yeah. You can do a better voice of trying to, a bit more of the in actual copy. Of Harley? No, Harley. I'm talking about a, like Peacemaker I could here. Try to, I could try to do Harley. You could for probably you. do a Harley. I can do. I I, I have I moments. Could, I, could, I could have a moment of it. But if I but, but I might turn too many people on. <laughs> so that is right. Today um, is the spoiled Suicide Squad uh, because guess what? We went and saw it again because we loved it that much, and now we're going to spoil the monkey balls out of it. That's right. I don't know why I chose that word, but that's what Completely I chose. Completely PG moment of monkey balls. Monkey balls. Because we're going to spoil the spoiling... fuck out of it. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> okay, so like when we go to the... the oh yeah, we tell them about this ad. The theater. There was a whole ad about coming back to the theater with the entire cast of the Suicide Squad. And they bleep out... The F bomb. Every single one of them says fuck. Yeah. You know, go get yourself a big fucking bag of popcorn and put all the fucking toppings on it. Um, and I remember a while back, James Gunn had said he had filmed a thing for a Canadian theaters chain. Mm. Um, and they actually asked them to swear. Right. Uh, so. And he didn't really want to. He thought it was weird. I mean, no, it's not like he was okay with it. Oh, I but know. It was obviously. Just, he, he felt that but he it was thought it was strange, strange that, that, that they actually requested him to swear. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. It so. wasn't like his idea where he's like, I want to go and make this promo and yeah. I'll swear. You know, so. I think it was a I think it was a way to differentiate the intensity mm. that was going to be the squad. Yeah. Right? This new version. Uh but yes, yeah, we we went to a new we went to it. Yeah. Uh, again. Yeah, uh, it's our second time back to the theaters to see the same movie. Mm-hmm. So there you go, Mr. Gunn. We uh, have paid you twice. Yeah. Unlike if you're in the States and you've got HBO Max and you, you get everything for lucky free. Bastards <laughs> and get it for free. Well, part of your subscription, I guess. But uh, we're not bitter free. at all. You know, no, whatever. not at all. You know, I, I, I got a text from one of my buddies. It's like, yeah, I've watched it like four times already. I so. hate you. Uh, so. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you. Come back each week. because Without you, we're absolutely nothing. Um, but we figured, you know what? It's been out long enough that we feel that we could come back because we... Well, this one is just... It's all in its entirety. If you haven't watched it, you just don't listen to the episode yeah. concept, right? It's, it's not... You're not missing anything or need to worry about it. You know it's spoiled already. Yeah, so we're more or less... I think we're just going to go through things that we liked or if, if there's anything that we didn't like or, or what... what describe, describe things in it in... In highly spoiled detail. Yeah, we're just going to... Every... You know what I really noticed today? Sorry, I just... Every bump on Starro. So detailed. You know, that actually gave me the heebie-jeebies a little creepy. bit, actually. Like, like suddenly looking like at the nobules. texture... Like, the texture, extreme texture. And that was just a lot going on Especially there. when, like, like, Sebastian was, like, like cupping that up. one. Yeah. That yeah. one that he was climbing over. Like, it kind of looked like, like a ball sack. Yeah, it was gnarly. It was, yeah, it was kind of like, wow. And maybe that's the bonus of getting to see it on the big screen. Because you get to see just how, how ball sack-ish Star Wars <laughs> looks. Every, every, every little node on him <laughs> every node. just looked like a big old... Giant purpley pink ball sack. Ball sack. Bump. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat. We just right jumped to the end of the movie. But yeah, anyway. so, yeah, have it's a okay. good day. Uh, this is episode 142. <laughs> um, you know. Sorry, yeah. I was going to say we're going to spoil every little, little minute bump out of it. And then that's what I came and so you got a ball sack. I got a ball sack out of that somehow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, um, so right off the bat, the movie starts with uh, Johnny Cash's uh, horrific song. Holy the shit. The Folsom. Have you never listened to that song? Of course I have. But oh. like intently listening to it, like when you have nothing else but it to listen to. And it's like, damn, Johnny Cash was serious. It was hardcore. It was hardcore, man. I mean, he shot a guy in Reno just to watch him bleed. 
right? It's like intense, man. It kind of gives you the a, whole like vibe of it right there. Yeah, like you kind of get a good idea then of what this squad is or where this one's going, right? Yeah. Um, but you get you get your introduction to Savant, and like we'd mentioned, I love the connection with the canary. Yeah, right. Like, like I love idea. it even more now because I mean it's still horrific that he killed the bird. Yeah, and it made me cringe even though I knew it was coming. But I was just like, oh, she'll get her revenge. Right. She'll get her revenge. Uh, speaking of Black Canary, Black Canary is getting an HBO Max movie. Uh, oh, Julie something Smart. else they can watch for free? How nice. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's not going to theaters, it'll show up on Crave. Mm. Right. So then we're somewhat okay. okay. Uh, but uh, she's going to be coming back as Black Canary. And the writer is the writer of Lovecraft Country, Misha mm. Green, I believe it was. Uh, so she's going to be writing that movie as well so mm. uh that's kind of exciting yeah uh, i hope uh that she actually shows up in uh the i would love to see the uh, otto schmidt uh that rebirth outfit. costume because it, it's it's very reminiscent of the past costumes but more tasteful for the new era yeah right yeah now wouldn't it be kind of cool though if they made like a prequel to suicide squad and a use of on and, and uh, michael roper came cool. back because then you find out, like, you find out where he ends. Like, wouldn't yeah. it be interesting to figure out how he got, got like, there. how he got to prison if yeah. she would go up against him? Like, I kind of like, want to see that. I really I like the beginning of it focusing so much on him. It shows, it, it throws you off because you're just, you get this connection where, like, everything is circled so much around him. You feel like it's going to be seen through his eyes. Yeah. And you really think he's going to be more of an important character. And he, you know, he kind of shows himself to be a bit more of the badass, like, just get things done. Yeah. And yet, when all this stuff is happening, he's such an amazing actor. His facial expression was, like, just, holy shit, what the hell is happening? Yeah. And so, when he runs, it totally makes sense. Like, the panic on his face. Oh, yeah. His, his... I mean, he would rather go out into the ocean, and he is still risking the idea of being blown up instead of going to this beach with these absolute lunatics. Yeah. Um, he does such a good job and yeah, I, it was so shocking how quickly he died. And I, I love that he used such big names and killed them so quickly at the yeah. same time. You know, it set the whole vibe. Yeah. Well, so like it was, I think it was interesting with that, that whole opening scene then is that it literally, you think this is the way it feels when, when they, like they, they 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 pick up everyone for the squad. They get them on there. You get your introductions to who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got the detachable kid. You've got... No, we got DDK. TDK? TD, TDK. DDK? Yeah. I don't know what DDK is. <laughs> TDK. Double dick. Wow, knock. you went that. I don't know. What? What? Double dick. <laughs> Somehow dicks involved? There's... Whole beach of dicks. If I told you to eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> what did you do? It? I eat a whole beach. This whole beach was covered in dicks. I would eat every would eat last one, one of them. them. In the name of freedom. <laughs> um but uh, that line doesn't get old. No, that no. whole scene no. is just still funny. Um but uh so you 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 get your interaction to and then you get um I don't, I don't even I can't remember who Pete Davis employed. Um uh, Black something? Blackguard. There we go. There we that go. Sounds right. Um and then you get Javelin and then Harley shows up with his boomer there hair and his accent. Yeah. Um yeah. and then you got Mongal Right. It's my name. Your name is Letters? All names are Letters, dude. I, Boomerang was so cool in this. <laughs> it was so funny because it was just so well delivered. Dude, he, like, all names are Letters. That's, you're like, wait a second. Right? They should have said, like, it was an acronym or something. Okay, that would have been made more sense than just Letters, right? But, but like, Boomer, Boomer is literally just that guy yeah. in this where he's just like, anything you say, he's going to come back with come that. Come back with something. That just makes you feel like a dipshit right that's how that he comes he comes across and it was so sad when everything goes south on that beach and to see and this is what i thought was just amazing about this was that you know right off the bat weasel dies yeah right and then blackguard walks up and he gets shot in the face so brutal and he his and face you get to see it again too right uh-huh. and then then you have like you know, Javelin's getting shot up at. And I think Mongol's charred body was pretty intense. You know, Mo- Man- Mongal, Mongal jumps up yeah. and grabs the, the thing. And you, you, get, you get one moment of, like, glory with, with Captain Boomerang where he throws the boomerang. And, and the slits head guy, guy like, chops head, his head. Yeah. yeah. And then Mongal 
it causes that helicopter to crash through all the for the the brush and yeah. it just shards boomerang oh. right and he turns yeah, he, around and he's got like this smile on his face like holy shit <laughs> and then he explodes right it's so brutal i it's you know what's interesting is that you see all these these deaths happen relatively quickly they're brutal but they're they're focused but they're quick yeah but then no in case you forgot how they died he goes and shows you all their corpses again, just so you remember. All the people have died, died. All they died, how they died, right? And it's like, holy crap, so you see Boomerang with his boomerang up, and yet he's all charred. The charred hand holding the, the silver boomerang. Right? Like, it was... Well, it was kind of cool to see that, because it was, like, just a little bit after, right? Mm-hmm. So then it was, like, oh, wow, like... Oh, yeah, it was a, that remember, like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's what happened. And... And then, then you also saw like everyone in the office, and they're like they're taking their bet money and all that, and they're yeah. and people are angry, people are happy, and you're like the it's weird actually energy like, about it. Yeah, right? it's it's actually quite sick and twisted, right? And you but see the, that. You know, I saw that. That's the, I think the only way they probably get through, right? Oh, they yeah. have to turn their horrific job into a game. Yeah. You know, um, and it detaches them from them being real people. Yeah. Right now, it's it, you know think of it as like a video game feel. They're they're characters to them now. Oh, totally. And uh, you know, it's it's sad. With that though, watching watching as they died, and like you could see in Mueller's face that she was happy though. Oh yeah, she's she's totally happy when they die. It's a little less people for her to deal right? with. Right. In the system. Right. And that's what she's kinda... totally fucking crazy. I think that's at the end of it. The whole movie just proves that she's actually the biggest villain. In the movie. She's the villain of the she movie. She is the villain. Oh, yeah. Right. Especially at the very end when she goes totally nuts. Right. She is the villain. And the fact that she's willing when they say, because that's the whole crux of, of this entire movie. Whenever anyone does anything against kids, it seems to be the the tipping point for some of the, the yeah. characters. Yeah. And it's a Waller, giant red flag. Waller is, is okay with it yes. when they say, but they're going to kill women and children. And she's okay And she doesn't that. care because it's not her problem in that moment. Yes. Right? And yeah, it goes to show that she is definitely the worst of the worst. Right. Because she has power as well. And she is seen as someone who is not a villain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was a cool intro to it. And it really throws you off balance because like... You know, you literally just watch the team just die. Yeah. And you're like, well, wait, what's this going to be about? And then it switches to the other beach so seamlessly. Yeah. And then they come out of the water and then there's your title card. Yeah. Right. And so beautifully done. It was just, yeah, it was just fantastic to see that. And then we cut back. Mm-hmm. And that's where we talked about before we got, to, got that lovely introduction to Idris Elba's mm-hmm. Bloodsport and the the realism, even with the watching that again and seeing when he was yelling at his kid. I laughed again. I, I was just like, oh, this is so true. Like the screaming, like, fuck you back and yeah, forth. You're right? like, oh, my God, how many times have I actually I, can, and, and I know the, I've wanted to and I will again. The the the, the energy of of a few of his is just like that exasperated like you can tell he's gotten to that point like the first one was anger and then after like the third one he's more it, it's more of the like spite yeah right like yeah just, well, it's just it has it's almost like the last word thing yeah well if she says it back well they become both children mm-hmm. it, you and you've devolved into you're not a parent anymore no you know you're both just yelling like children yeah and and that's what it turned into it's so, yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Um, As she collects that B team or second team, uh, I noticed because we were wondering about Toxic Crusader. Mm. It's on the TVs. Oh, okay. They're playing the Toxic Avenger. Sorry. The Toxic oh, Avenger, okay. the first movie, uh, right near the beginning, is on the TVs in the um, in the, the prison. Oh, okay. So, I thought that was kind of kind of a cool thing. Nice. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because they all have so many different characters in there too. Like you see, like the one kind of looks like Crazy Quilt, that one chick, because she's all patchwork. Oh, okay. I, don't know if it's I was crazy trying quilt or to patchwork. look back in the back, and I didn't. So I guess when I have to see it again when we finally own it, because then we can watch it again. Well, I was yeah, trying to pay attention. To this the is details. one that this would be one I'd buy. Oh yeah, like, this totally is are. this is literally like I I I can't wait for the and the, actually the, watch this. it, not just have it on the shelf for a year. No, not, no comment on you. He's. So anyways, um, but we get our introduction to all the different, the, the B team, right? And we get yeah. to see that, you know, I, I still love 
the introduction to Peacemaker because it's exactly the same as Blood Sports. Right. Right. And Blood Sports are you, you fucking with me? Like, yeah. seriously. Like, I love that he questions it, too. Yeah. You know, it's not it's like, wait but, a second. You told me it was a unique skill. Yeah, but I do it better. Right. And it's just that banter starts right there. And you're just like, yes. I love how he looks like he's not a real person. He's standing in the, as a Peacemaker. Oh, he's, like just, he's so... just so still. And then he's like, he comes alive. Yeah. It's kind of jarring. Like, right. whoa, there's a person there. OK. Right. <laughs> it's. His his version of Peacemaker is what I feel like John Walker should have been almost mm. in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, that would have been cool. Like, um, so because if, he's more likable and he's more evil. Yeah. Like Peacemaker is, is more likable of a character. Yeah. But he's just pure like yeah. because he because because he's also women w- willing to do women and children, whatever it takes, whatever yeah. it takes to yeah. claim peace. Like it's it's intense. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's definitely scary. Um, And then we get Ratcatcher, too. Yeah. Um, I really like her. Yeah. Like she's a lot of heart. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that. I mean, I'm jumping ahead now, but it was just in general with her character. I I kind of. I was impressed. Here's this movie that's so over the top violent, full of action and ridiculousness. And I actually teared up near the end because of her and her talking about her dad and the idea of especially, you know, with with all the rats and she's talking. She's so intense with what she's doing. And she's crying, too, just because the sheer probably mental intensity of what she's trying to do and emotion and everything. And I was just like, holy crap, I, I freaking hate rodents. And here I'm tearing up over this girl that controls rats. Like, James Gunn, you are a magician. <laughs> You've made us care about an evil villain guy, a shark man, and rats. <laughs> right. Like, oh my God. Right. So, yeah, I really like her character, though. Yeah. No, she's, totally. Like She's so, she's just, just enough kind of humorous kind of obnoxious teenager. I love the comment with the millennial thing, like because of it, they're yeah. sleeping and everything. Um, to, but not, and not enough to be irritating. I can't even say that. Cause I'm technically a millennial. Yeah. We both are millennials. Right? Look at us as we do our podcast. Mm-hmm. Millennials. <laughs> so, um, the shark. King and shark. right. Oh, I love him so much. You know, Stallone did a fantastic job with that voice because, like, he was able to give off such a childlike glee. When he was laughing at one point with the the, the friends, the yeah, squishy, st- terrifying jellyfish, Pac-Man fish, ghost yeah. people. Yeah, stupid um, friends. The laugh that he had. <laughs> and I was just like, holy crap, I can't believe that's Stallone. Yep. Like, that's the weirdest sound ever. Right. And yet he's just gleeful and little. And it's just... It was such a like good, impressive voice acting, quite yeah. honestly. Oh yeah, like I was, I was impressed. Anamu, Anamu, Nanaimo, Nanaimo bars. No way, no way, no way, Anuma Numu, Anumoy, Anumoy, Anumu, Nanaimo, Apparently, we've sunk into just rambling right now. King Shark. Mamma way. Why? I, I remembered it you when know, we were watching it. The entire time it. I was watching it, I'm I was like, like, I will remember this. I don't Apparently, know why I this is, this is so this. hard. Nanara? What? No. Nanar- no, there's no R in it. No. 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 There's no R. Why is this so ridiculous? Because it's it fun to say so when you're just like. It sounds so normal when you hear it. When you hear it. Nanawe? Nanawe? That sounds a little bit better. We're going to look it up so we stop sounding like idiots. Well, we can just keep on while I try to look it up because it's right now. Um, yeah. For some reason, it's being really difficult to find. Uh, but I like the connection that Ratcatcher makes with him of trying to... It's not going to be like... Sh- you know, I, I, let's be honest. Okay, they should have brought more food. He's a freaking great white shark man. Like, why did yeah, they not think true. he was going to need to eat things? But I like that they that she was so... That heart that she had to try to talk to him about explaining... It's like even with a kid, though, you have to give them a reason to not want to do something. You can't just tell them to not do it. She ha- she helped him find a reason for himself to choose not to eat them. You know, and I, I like that. Nanawe. We're going to go with that. Nanu. No, it's Nanawe. Why is it Nanawe? I don't know. 
That's what it sounded like. Okay. <laughs> sure why not. I remembered hearing I it. I was, it was like, I could sound. say it. I could say it then, but like, then I got away from it way. forever, and it it's just King Shark totally was gone. So we're gonna call him Nana. Nana. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, is, I really like that that they, you know, they, they he 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 grew so much in it, you know. Yeah. Um, I I don't understand how he was able to eat whole people. He wasn't big enough. No, to eat someone in in, in solid form like that. Yeah. He never even, it's not like he ate them in pieces. He could have probably fit a whole person in him in pieces. Yeah. But to eat a whole man just head to toe, swallowed fully, that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, Random, Mm -hmm. uh, when I was looking up, because I first went to IMBD to look to see if they had it at, but it's just King Shark in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Sebastian. Mm hmm. Is actually voiced by uh, D. Bradley Baker. Oh, yeah. Sebastian has a voice. He squeaked. Yeah. Is that rat waving at me? Yes. Why? Because he's friendly. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. So yeah. So the animal sounds. Where's for my Sebastian? Sebastian pup? You know, with rat catcher, I guess. Huh. I don't think he, she even has one. That's not okay. A pop. Um, but yeah. Hmm. D. Bradley Baker is also the voice of the clones in the Clone Wars mm-hmm. and Bad Batch and all that. So there are lots of them as well. He uh, does uh, a lot of animal sounds. Yeah. So he's nice. like go to animal guy, apparently. Nice. But that was just random. That was random. So. Yeah, that's good. Um, so anyway, so now we have Waller. Now, watching this, the scene again, when they go and end up killing all the freedom fighters, you know, at first... It, I think I kind of remembered it like them just, well, we need to save him. So obviously he's being held by hostage and we need to kill everyone. And we just, that's our default. We kill everyone. But then you realize how they're just following the orders because Waller tells them specifically they're being held by the, the villains yeah. and they are to use extreme prejudice and make sure they kill anything on site, basically. So they're just following. They have no reason to know otherwise. Yeah. I don't know if Waller, I'm assuming Waller doesn't know either because I don't it, think she cares. I know she doesn't. Um, well, yeah, but there's no way for her to have known because they only can see what his heat signature. So yeah. it's the idea, well, you're being held hostage and that's it. Um, but yeah, most importantly, yeah, she wouldn't care at all. It doesn't fit with her mission. No. Right. Um, so it, anyone in the, in the way is, is what the problem is, but then it's, it's a little bit of new light. It's still, it's not great that they kill everyone, but they have no reason to assume that these are anything but but villains yeah. and so yeah it's just another another way that villain that waller is just terrifying just yeah willing to kill anyone yeah i mean like so. one thing i was gonna mention before this we didn't get to ever see what cal uh polka dot man could do mm. right yeah we just saw i like, love that introduction where it just like he starts glowing his face starts glowing and he's all bulbous and yeah. like then he's gonna he's gotta puke it out right I, lo- it. I love that that you don't actually get him first seeing what what he can do in a fight Right. It's it's the initial like just like the you know, there's no conversation. It's just, you know, uh, blood sport observing it. Yeah. And that's it. I think that's one of the things that's kind of cool, too, is because then it also lines up with a b- bit of everyone thinking he's a bit of a pussy. Like when Calendar Man calls him a pussy, come to my kid's birthday party. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, like, OK, so is he why is he here? Like, yeah. is he actually useful? Like, yeah. what's happening? Does he right? throw polka dots at people? Right. He does throw polka dots. <laughs> um, but then we get to see in that whole scene um, the big dick wagging contest between yes. Bloodsport and um, Peacemaker. Yeah. To see who can basically do his more kills, right? Which is and just amazing. That was a pretty epic uh, battle scene mm-hmm. to show their force. Like they were a force to be reckoned with. Oh yeah. Nothing was standing. You know, you know if you like, were standing the way they, you were dead. The, the ax, you know, first you get <sighs> eaten and mm-hmm. then you get the rats to attack the guy only to get the guy, the ax thrown at him. And then, well, like, this is it's such a great scene because it introduces power, everyone's power. Yeah. So clearly. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, you get to see and how everyone. wild they all almost work together Right. So quickly. Yeah. Right. They're they able to they all like, complimented each other. Yeah. Almost, right? And it they shows in each why other's way they weren't they weren't um, awkward or or stumbling or anything. Yeah. And it shows why then they were picked yeah. specifically picked for this mission. Yeah. Right. And um, 
you know, you see, you see Peacemaker going through there with his axe. And like that, when he hacks up that guy that's sleeping. It's so brutal. It's so fast. And he does so many like wackety whack whacks. Right. Right. And then he's got his he little like blow dart. Down. Yeah. And then he hops up, gets his blow darts and he just keeps going. Right. Right. And then Bloodsport with his, with his uh, slingshot weapon. Yeah. That was right? pretty cool. Um, and then uh, he starts like lighting those guys on fire. Yeah, we got flamethrowers. And then the um, when he drops the, he shoots the thing, and the the fan falls in, and the guy's like it electrocutes him. Yeah, and, yeah. And then yeah, the, I like the delayed. It was not a non lethal wait for it. Yeah, splitting rounds. Yeah, <laughs> show off. Yeah, oh. you're not, not showing, showing off. off. This is dope, dope as, as fuck. fuck. <sighs> you're right. Damn, it's true. <laughs> I love it's so that good. line. It's so good. Because he he says it so well, too. You know, it's like, it's so real feeling. Mm-hmm. Because I can, it sounds bad, but I could, like, see us having a conversation like yeah. that, right? We're like, oh, damn, like, shut down. Yeah. There's no rebuttal to that. His no. face is just perfect. It falls, and it's just, yeah, you're right. Okay. You win. The um, man's penis why is that there? What, why Who was, the hell stands up like that? He's got a shirt on. He just he's just Winnie the Pooh in it. Out. Yeah. And he's just like, what, was he like eating or brushing his teeth? I, he was brushing his teeth. Well, that makes some sense, I guess. But why does he have a shirt on and no pants? He's okay with the bottom half of his body, <laughs> not the top. Just got to show his wang off. Apparently. Well, you know, that, that misty breeze. Yeah. Maybe maybe it rejuvenates the ball sack. I thought the same thing. I'm like, why is the man's penis out? It's really out. It's not just like a little like accident. No, it's really out. Like full on. You saw penis. Like that was that was, it was unnecessary. Weird nakedness. <laughs> if he had been fully naked, I wouldn't have questioned it. Yeah, it was the shirt. It was the shirt. If he had not had anything on, it would have been like, dude, dude's naked. Whatever. I get it. Yeah. No, it was the shirt that ruined it. Apparently, Winnie the Pooh it is more, or Donald Duck in it, or whatever it's, it is, it's actually more common than you realize. Apparently. So there you go. Now I have to ask. <laughs> Do you Winnie Raise the Pooh Raise your it? hand if you Winnie the Pooh it. Or if you want to refer to Donald Ducking it. I don't know. I'm um, just, just curious. You notice they're both Disney characters, too. Yeah. Oh, Why is that? Why, why is Disney one rock rock? Because there's right? apparently a lot of people that do apparently it. Apparently, it's okay. They're just like, hey, you know what? Mickey Mouse is like, like no, I feel weird if I'm just I wearing a shirt and nothing right. else. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe it, maybe I'll start a trend. Maybe I'll start walking around like that. <laughs> sure, kiddo will love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> no, I got to go for my tidy whities I'm going to the gym. Oh, yeah, tidy whities I'm going to start going back to the gym. And I'm going to rock with that Teddy like Whitey's. intense bulge bulge going on there. That yeah. was distracting. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you salivated. No, no. I just was like, dude, like, oh, my God. It's like huge on the screen and it's ridiculous. Why do you why do you not have pants on? <laughs> Racist. <laughs> Tidy Whitey. Seriously. <laughs> Um, but anyways, after the man with the balls and dick hanging out uh, died. Um, let's see. What other do they did they just walk in? I love how quickly they stop too. And with the like, no, we didn't see anyone. Are you drinking tea? <laughs> yeah, they, they saved me. They helped me. Like, oh, um, yeah, we didn't see anyone. Like it, it, it was so well, like that whole scene was just so fantastically yeah. done. That oh, and we missed Cal- uh, Calendar Man. Why do I keep calling him Calendar Man? Polka God dot. damn it. Polka Dot Man. Um, and his melting polka dots. Yeah, those are scary. Those are so scary. Like, those are really terrifying when you actually think about it. And then when you see what they do to people, even more scary. Right? Like, like they just melt things. It's like throwing acid. Like, how did Batman actually beat him in this world? That's a very good question. Some sort of antidote that Alfred whipped up for him? How? I don't know. It literally melts things. Yeah. Like, he's actually, when you think about it. So power dampener is the only way. He's actually pretty damn powerful. And he would have been a Well, because he has constant ammo. Yeah. Really? I guess he didn't use a lot. Like, maybe he he needs to recharge a bit. Maybe it's a matter of taking it down. Because otherwise, otherwise, at the end, you think he would have been able to keep going. When he was facing off against Starro. Yes, because he has to, he, well, because there's times where he doesn't have the polka dot showing. Yeah. So he has to expel them. 
Yeah. So he probably his his weakness is that he has to recharge. Charge. So that's when Batman took him out. Yeah. He waited until he was weak and depleted, and then took him out. Yeah. I just thought about that. I was like, Yeah. But yeah, he just otherwise he seems like super powerful. So he does throw polka dots. I love that. That's just okay. But like when you when you first have when they make fun of him, then then when you see it, you're like, Damn, that that is scary though. Uh Like those things were. You know, it's. Do we know who his other, like, siblings are? Like, does he have other ones that are well, like that? Well, Gunn yeah. made it more of his own. Like, this oh, is his okay. own gun-ized version of it. Because before, it was all technology-based, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I love how crazy he is and all the pictures, when you see it through his eyes, of all the characters being like his mom. That's so creepy. It's so fucking creepy. It's, like, really disturbing. To see how messed up. And I love, too, that they make those things like Norman Bates and, like... Right? Like, like dude, you're gonna seriously got some mommy. Or, like, when, when they show up and it's just, like, it's like I, I envision them all as my mother and I kill them all. They're just like, <laughs> you're like oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> you just outed us. Like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> ah! Super socially awkward. <laughs> um, But, no, like, yeah. And then we do... So now we have Flag. Now we've convinced them to help, and we're going to go get Milton. Yeah. But we're going to talk about Harley. Harley, yeah, so... I Harley, loved Harley in this Harley movie. is fantastic in this. You know what? I think the thing that I noticed about her that was also different, not just the fact that the rotten tattoo was missing, mm-hmm. um, but her eyes in this one. Mm. Her eyes are open so much more than I think they've been in any of the other movies. I think that's what gave her more appeal, almost. So she's just more wide-eyed. Feel. Her eyes are, like, like big. Yeah. Like, it's like she's, like, always more, like, looking in awe at yes. everything. Yes, she has a even very when she's like, Yeah, even her. when she's, like, yelling, her eyes are, like, just, like, I try to do it and my eyes dry out and I feel like they're going to fall out of my skull. Um, so I'm just going to be like this all the time at you? No, please don't. <laughs> I don't know. That was terrible. Apparently, Harley Quinn sexy. I am not. I did not say those words. I know. I did not say those words. That is not. You said more appealing. How is that more sexy? <laughs> That's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. I know, Admiral. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it's a trap. Run now, Mike. Run. <laughs> um. <laughs> but like compared to the other movies, or she's been a yeah. bit more like doughy, like um, yeah, downgraded, yeah. almost feeling like. Um, but she was a lot more. She was bright eyed and bushy bright, tails. Yeah, you know, like kind of like when she was like not totally depressed at all, out. right? Yeah. So it's like she found her her stride in life. Yeah, and it was doing okay. I, mm-hmm. you know what I think I love about this is I get I, I don't know if I talked about it on the last episode, but I I like that it's not focused at all about. You know, you you have a moment of of relationship wise and the red flags and the boyfriend thing, um, but she's she's not hanging on that and and all sad and mopey. Yeah, and she's also not in the like fuck you world. I'm going to do what I want type of thing. Yeah. she's just there and kicking ass and being herself. And that's why I think that as much as they say that this isn't it's its own thing, I still think it plays well after First Suicide Squad, Birds yeah, of Prey I think and it goes this cool like it, it, after Birds of Prey. Like it it really does work as a as a good threequel for Harley's character. Yeah. Um I love how she, you know, why are you in jail again? I got road rage in a in bank. A bank. <laughs> right? <laughs> Like so. makes complete sense. Yeah. Um. But yeah, when she gets, gets with this this general that's become the president. Yeah. El presidente. Um. And then he's like trying to woo her because she's seen as like this agent of chaos against America. Yeah. Um. That was the only time where on the second watch I felt the movie did slow a bit. Mm-hmm. As much as I was enjoying it with her, the the romance kind of was like it, it was like that. We've been riding really, really high, and this is that moment where we need to come down. Yeah. I'm not saying that it, it did anything bad for the movie, but it was like, okay, we're kind of like, we're like leveling out a little bit. Yeah. And then... There's been so much action. Yeah. And then when she finally does shoot him, 
Oh, we're going to skip over all like the romance and like, like the awesome, like artistic, like I love the birdcage scene where they're just the, the stereotypical, like floating, like towards each other. Yeah. I thought that was an awesome shot. Oh, yeah. Because it was so arty feel. Yeah. You know, it was it was, you know, nothing else matters. And it, it just the floating on air type thing, even though, you know, it's like literally the same day. Yeah. And it was ridiculous. Right. Um, and. And I like the realism aspect where she's, she still is like, what the fuck? You want me to marry you? But it's the fuck you're hot. So whatever, yeah. you know, she's just a normal girl um, with that. And I thought it was just, it was funny with that, the real, the raw yeah. aspect for it. Right. But I, I get it. Yeah. It was a, it was definitely a, a lull from the drama, but the lulls for the group from the, from the, um, sorry, the lull from the action, the lulls with the group had more humor. Yeah. While hers was following a little bit of a different path. Like yeah. That, right. So, um, but, but yes, then, when she shoots him, when she shoots him, that's still even watching at the same time, even though I knew it was coming, the sound on that, like was jarring, it's right? Still jarring. Like, it was well, you know, like, I forget how fast she does it. Yeah. You know, it's it literally as soon as he says that, you know, the, the, your family and your, your and children will die, and anyone just, that, bam. yeah. So she picked up that gun so damn fast. Yeah, right? She didn't even question it. it. There was so at the same time, bravo, right? For not even being like, really? Are you sure? Why would you do this? She didn't pull the "I need to change him." Yeah, she did the healthy thing and killed him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna murder him. Um, but it was interesting too with that story though that about how like he slashes your tires and all that it's like you know that there's that story that this is what the joker had must have done to her at some point yeah like after after birds of prey like yeah right he tried crawling back tells you the music you like ain't real music right (laughs) so yep well yeah because that's what he does right it's it he can't live with her but he can't live without her Mm -hmm. because he's broken so of course then it's the you know, he'll do anything. And then she would have, she would have scorned him and it would have been, know. you know, re, you know, back at her. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, but then it's really creepy though. It shows how fucked up she is though. When she's like, you're really pretty and all, but I think you're better like this as you're bleeding out, Yeah, you know, and all those bad thoughts are draining away. And it's like, Oh my God, you're just totally crazy. Yeah. Well, it shows how much then like her character is broken. Yeah. And that continuousness of it, right? That reminder that she is, not okay still. Yeah. And we see that more later on with all the flowers. Yeah. Right? So. And then, so then you have the, the squad has infiltrated the town in civilian clothes and they're having a party and all Thanks that. Thanks to Milton. And, uh, yeah, right. And I really like that scene because it showed them coming the together. Bar? Yeah. Mm. You know, they're at the bar. They're waiting for the thinker to show up because he likes to show up at the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you they're know, just being regular people. People, yeah. And they're getting together. And, like, you know, Peacemaker has that moment where he, like, orders drinks for everyone, including the rat, right? Yeah. And, like, they're all bonding and they're all laughing and they're all having a good time. And they start God, drinking. Peacemaker's awesome. Right? Yeah. And then and then you have, like, Bloodsport and Flag are hitting it off because they've worked together in the past. Yeah. And, like, so it was just kind of cool to see, like, them as a as Well, Bloodsport's team. loosening up, too. Yeah. Because I love that you're going to be that guy. That guy yeah. who only drinks one thing. But yeah. then he's, he's, it's that, that social lubrication of alcohol. Yeah. You know? And that it allows people to, to bond in, in ways that you didn't really expect. Right? Yeah. So. And then we get that lovely scene where Polka Dot Man is dancing with his mother. Oh, that was just, that was then awkward. It, then it took another turn because he goes from just talking about how much he hates her and all that. And then he's just visiting. And then he's so happy. And he's like doing that pound dance with that one twerking in front of him. Yeah, and it's, it's like, so do you always see them then? And then this is just really on a whole nother level of creepy. Right. And, and yeah, that was awkward. That was like... It's like, this scene cannot end fast enough. Why am I still seeing it? <laughs> make it stop. <laughs> like, I really felt like, please make it go away. Yeah. <laughs> right? So then, then the, uh, the they get the thinker. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, the uh, police... Uh, well, because with now with the president's, you know, shot, now yeah. they're realizing that... The general takes over. Yeah, and that uh, Harley is not going to be the only American in town, so now everything is on high alert, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, so I thought it was pretty ingenious then for them to take, you know, they sent Polka Dot Man and Ratcatcher away, and then they turned themselves in. That whole scene of them in their, in the, like, transport vehicle there... Is pretty awesome. 
it's so quick. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I thought it was, it felt like it was a little bit longer the first time around. And then you realize how quick it was. Um, and just how I love how it's like, well, no, that's just a lucky chance. You know, they're not going to be able to do this. And they just all know, like you had commented, they all know exactly what he's talking about. And they all just, they're that well trained. Yeah. And you know, I had a whole new level of appreciation for flag and his ability. Mm. He is a good damn soldier. Yeah. And it's a shame that he is not around. Right. Um, but yeah, he is. It's impressive how well he can hold himself with people who are trained mercenaries, basically. Yeah. Right. And, um, or shows that like, if you took this as a sequel to the other one, it shows that he's grown as a person and he's probably been on tons of missions by now. Yes. And he's, Oh, he's more comfortable with being around criminals and being able to can you know work with and see the benefits of what they can do. Well, honestly, just him and Harley, the way they look at each other. Yeah. You can tell that this has not been only the second time they've interacted. Exactly. You know, um, and I think that there was such a a respect and almost a a, a friendly love between them. Yeah. Um that they that were just brotherly so, love yeah, almost feel right yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Like or, just real bond and yeah. connection um with the way they kind of looked at each other. Like, yeah, this is just what we do. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, you know that there was a lot more story there. Exactly. So um so they're, they're, you liked you liked that moment though before that when they're in the alley mm. and Ratcatcher talks about throwing uh the rats up uh, Thinker's ass and you were like <laughs> it reminded me so much of the doctor in that moment. <laughs> yeah, because the thinker's like well, you, you might be surprised by my answer. And I was like, oh, my God, that totally sounds like the doctor yeah. right there. Like, that's something he would have said to just throw someone off. Yeah. Because the doctor was very fluid and okay with a lot of things. Yeah. And, yeah, that was all I could think of. His whole performance reminded me, basically, of the, it was almost like the doctor oh, had the, gone bad. Yeah. Like, he had gone crazy. If this had been the master, but the doctor as the master. You're right. Now, I have a question for you about the thinker. I don't know how much you know about him, but what do the little nobules on his head do? Other than make his brain good. Yeah, basically make his brain good. <laughs> okay. Um, so, because they keep, it shows in the past he didn't have as many. Yeah. So he's obviously adding more. Yeah, he's like, he's just in. Are they extra, ner- like they're additions to his yeah. brain, essentially? Like extra yeah, capacitor yeah. feel? And- yeah. Okay. Adding more, okay. more to it. Like They make his brain good. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just I love how he it. talks down to them. So I'm like, yes, yes, they make my brain good. I'm like, yeah, everything about this is the doctor. That's all. Right. That's all you hear. That's, that's all, all I, I could every moment. Everything it was. Yeah. Like, that, that's probably why they got him, too, because yeah. because he comes across so high and mighty. Yeah, it's the he, he does such a great job out of out of the, the current doctors is has almost he has the most ego ego. And the, the yeah. most, um, you know, looking down on people. Yeah, that malice right. almost of like, yeah. I'm better than you. Yeah, this why are you even questioning it? I'm the best and I know what I'm doing. I'm a doing. genius. Yeah. Shut up. Let me and keep he's, working. He's scary. Yeah. Um, definitely, uh, definitely the mad scientist. But he made a good point. Yep. Though. Oh, he made a very good point. He makes such a good point of the fact that like, just go away. Let me keep doing what I'm doing because I'm keeping the beast at bay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's that... that As soon as they take that away from him, then all hell breaks loose. That idea of, like, there's two sides. Like, yes, they should never been in this scenario. But they are now. They are. So what do they do? Right? And it's terrifying to think of, like... Yeah. If they just left Star up there, he would have been fine. But maybe so... I mean, we're jumping to the end now. But it made me so sad when they find... When, when the, all the, the puppets say with Star that I was just happy floating and staring at the, I, I, at the stars mm-hmm. and I was almost cried I was like this big James Gunn again he's making me cry over a giant starfish yeah. that's you know taking over everyone but it's just so true and so sad like well it's what just, we do with anything though yeah, like, it, it's the idea of like human we, we see we see animals and we 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 take them as trophies yeah. we take them as something like to 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 make our own right, right? Where that's where like say rat catcher was different she was not necessarily taking away all their free will. Yeah. She was also empowering them. She, yes, yeah, she's a certain amount of controlling, but at the same time, like she's not holding them hostage forever. For, yeah. Right. And I'm pretty sure that they would have the ability to go after her if they really wanted yeah. to. And yeah, that idea that we just, we see something and we're curious and we think we have the ability to control everything because we're supposed to, we're supposed mm-hmm. to dominate everything. 
So why would we not be able to capture this thing? Right. Yeah, think about that. Like how it's a, if you put that in a different perspective, like now we're going to get all deep with real world thing and another, you know, wild animals and whatnot. Then it just kind of makes you think differently. Right. Oh, yeah. And and yeah, that made me just it so creates sad. their own problem. Yeah. By putting this, if it's any animal, like putting something in a cage. Yeah. And then, and then wondering why it, the why animal attacks. attacks. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like the all the problems that we've been having around here with coyotes. Yes. Right. We're going to take their habitat away. And then we're going to wonder why they're attacking. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's because they don't have the same places to hunt. Yeah. Right. Because they, they hunt by by scent. They hunt by instinct. They hunt by. Yeah. They're not like, oh, the humans have taken how this many. Place. There's a fence here. I'm not supposed to go through this. OK. Yeah. How many thousands of years of just instinct that have been bred into them? Yeah. And they're just going to say, well, you know, we've now built, uh, you know. There's a wall here. I'm not supposed to go through yeah, it. Yeah. There's all it. these condos here. Whatever. I, right. Yeah. And so, yeah. And there's so. garbage outside. So, of course, I'm going to go check out what's in these cans. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's so, it's we so think difficult. we're so smart, but we're so idiotic when it comes to nature. Yeah. We, we feel we dominate everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can't just fuck everything into submission and hope that it goes away. Yeah, because it's going to come back and bite us. It already is. Right? Yeah. So there's our... Deep moments with Deep Cup of Red. Moments. Okay, so back to the movie. <laughs> Uh, we haven't talked about Harley and, you know, when she's in, after she gets caught, she's being tortured um, by the general there. And um, I, I thought I like her. Her escape is pretty. Ingenious. I think you really loved the fact that they showed the gymnastics. I love her, her acrobatic and like circus performer feel. Yeah. Um, first off, I'm just super impressed by anyone who could do this um, at all. Like the idea of acrobatics is just yeah. mind bogglingly impressive to me. And so. You know, the fact that she's hanging there and she lifts herself up and she strangles this guy with her legs, like yeah. after pretending to be passed out, like it's just such a, a good act and so much strength and willpower. And it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> Not kill someone, but just have the ability to do that. Right. See, there's your goal. Uh, you just need to be able to figure out how to grab something with your toes and like swing it up and be able to unlock it with your feet. Right. So. Uh, you never know when that could save your life. We're telling kiddo that, you know, the idea of being able to pull yourself up would save your life. Here you go. If I'm ever strung yeah. up by chains and being tortured to death, now I will have a nah, life. You get on it. Right? Um, but yeah, peace her, and liberty. <laughs> uh, but yeah, her, her ability to, to control herself like that, she's just so delicate and controlled in her movements. so slow. Was, yes. That's what's fantastic. It was quiet. so impressive. Because like, you didn't want to cause the chain to rattle it's yeah really is like... the, the, the acrobatic aspect so i love that and then the sheer intensity of this goes from so slow controlled quiet you know almost you know beautiful in its own sense and then she just goes the balls bloody to mayhem. the wall mayhem as she's yep. just blowing everything up and just killing everyone i love how she stands in a circle and just just keeps shooting the gun around like absolute insanity yeah um but it's so damn fun. But, well, yeah, that whole scene where she's breaking out is just is amazing because you start with that that twirling like Michael Bay yeah. shot where you know picking shot. people <laughs> picking people off from all those angles, uh -huh. only to go in and just like obliterate those dudes in that the and then cell she just area. Runs and she's just hitting people with doors. Yeah. And like the, like the brutality boys. behind yeah. that, and then being able to that, grab we got a, people. We got a taste of that in Birds of Prey, yes. in the jail cell. And now this is like a continuation of that, seeing that physicality. Well, she's, she's taking all of her surroundings and being able to use it, and it just shows how how much she learned throughout her years, mm -hmm. um, either by herself or with the running with the Joker, yeah. on how to protect herself and and take mm -hmm. care of things. Um, but how much strong, how strong she is, yeah, and how like, I don't know if courageous is the word. That seems too funny. Um, how ballsy she is. Yeah. Of just going for it. You yeah. know, she has no fear. And and that that ability to just, I, I think she's numb emotionally and physically. Well, I think that's too. what was great about when it transitions to the next scene where she picks up the big, big assault rifles and she starts just going to town. And all what of a sudden, was a Terminator shot? You said, yeah, yeah. She just looked. It was that slow mo Terminator shot. And and even even and... you can you can hear the the footsteps over everything else mm -hmm. as she walks with them, and then just just opens up. But then all the animation that comes from that, yes, and it shows then in that moment that she's numb to the violence. Yes, 
and the blood's she not there anymore. Doesn't it see becomes it. flowers. Yeah, and it shows her psychosis in that that you know she's not seeing the violence anymore. Yeah. She's seeing something else, and especially then when she grabs a javelin and it gets even more. And there's animated birds flying around, right? and, and she's hearing the song. I ain't got no it's, body. It's more of like the princess. She said she was a princess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. It's whoa. I just realize that connection yeah and then when she gets out what i think is awesome is that when she break finally gets to that scene and she's like impaled people and murdered them and all this brutality bloody mess of people behind her when she's standing outside waiting for the cab you still see in that hallway the flowers and the birds and you can still faintly hear the music Mm -hmm. even when she gets in the cab and it goes to drive by you still see everything there so then in her mind that is exactly what happened and that was like their way of almost breaking the fourth wall without breaking the fourth wall yeah right it's showing that she doesn't realize the path of destruction she leaves behind herself yeah she is okay because she just sees flowers and rainbows and and birdies and everything's okay yeah and it was i think that was a really cool way to show to show it right yeah like also too i bet you it probably helped tone the rating down a bit yeah because that would have been a lot of blood flying everywhere too because it was such close combat as well um yeah so I love that so here they are trying to save her and then she just shows up so intense yeah like super I'm I'm so glad they didn't get too far because that would have been almost irritating yeah right it was I think it was so much better clear shot that it was just right there at the very just in time yeah what are you guys doing yeah you know what 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 <laughs> I love too that with Bloodsport where she's like well I can go back up and all that and he's like well that's patronizing like <laughs> no like why because it was awesome too because like they were just so mad at flag that he was going to go rescue her like they were just so angry and like you know and even you know you get you get blood sport even like having to insult peacemaker with the the toilet seat on his head right Mm -hmm. it's a sign of freedom and peace and and then it's a beacon of peace right and then you know, then they don't have to do any of it. Yeah. Right. You know, I was just I was thinking. So because here they are, they're in the city and their comms are down. Right. So yeah. they haven't been able to get instructions with Waller and she hasn't been able to scream and freak out at them. So is that the only reason why she wouldn't have condoned them going to try to save Harley? She wouldn't have cared. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it shows, though, how what a good person Flag is and how much he does care about Harley in general. But I think he would have saved anyone. Really. I think it was just the idea of keeping the team. Yeah, it was. He's he's that soldier and the comrade and they're a team yeah. and they're supposed to all be together. At the end of it, I think he, he, he would prefer to have everyone come back. Yeah. And you know. so it shows how much he doesn't see them as nothing disposables he sees them as valuable team members yeah. because he's the one who's actually had to work with them yeah but that's the only reason why i think they actually can go in that operation is because she can't talk to them yeah and uh, everything about it goes because the fact that the city has the dampeners yeah so then once they get everything changes once those dampeners are gone yeah and she can start freaking out at them she again. can start controlling them again yeah so, I just so then i wonder too now. then as much as she says that the the explosives are still in play, I wonder if they actually were. Because she, if she, so because they hadn't, could she still not even see their trackers? Because you would think yeah, if they if were, she could have seen their trackers, she could have seen that they were going off mission for something. Yeah. Um, no, they couldn't see anything. Yeah, because that's why when they come back, everything lights up again. Yeah, so there was no reason why that she wouldn't have been able to do anything. Yeah, so maybe that's why she's even more mad at the end is because she'd lost control so much. Yep. and she hadn't been able to manipulate all the puppet strings yep. all the time. Because so. if she had been able to see everything too then you know that she would have been popping them off the moment things were going south between Flag and Peacemaker. You're right. Right? Like, she would have just popped She would have just taken... Yeah. Yeah. She would have just taken them out. Someone standing in the way of the mission. Because, yeah, Rackhatcher was standing in the way of the mission. Yeah. And then Bloodsport would have probably been taken out since Mm -hmm. he had killed killed Peacemaker. So... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so they've saved Harley, and now they're going to go... They have a thinker, and... They're going to break into Jotunheim. Yeah. If you have personalized license plates, you die. I like, too, that they're sitting there eating the empanadas. Yeah. Like, I just thought it was... It was like such a, a weird little... thing. Like, that was the first thing you hear from them. Who ate the rest of the empanadas? Yeah. Like, such a random line. Right. Showing that they actually are eating. Yeah. Because that's know? something that's not in movies or yeah. in, in TV usually, right? Yeah. So it's so. just like, John Cena's just sitting there powering up the... Right. 
how many did he how many did he eat like right so um but you know when they they get to the Jotunheim, mm-hmm. i love when it just starts raining it causes that fog yeah and those shot where they're walking through and then you just see milton off to the edge it's just like milton like, still milton here there? right <laughs> And I still think it is probably one of the beautifulest shots in modern cinema, though, when King Shark rips that man in half. Oh, it was fucking glorious. Like, just to see that again. It's like lightning like, behind him, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, oh. Like, that thing was just a great shot. Yeah. Like, it was just. Because it kind of goes into a bit of a shadow. Yeah. And then you have all the guts going everywhere, yeah. too. Oh, it was it was beautiful. It was just like I I was when I watched it again. I was like, no, this this is like a cool shot. Like, yeah, it's probably my favorite shot of the entire movie. Yeah, just because it it's just so stylized and just looked cool and just almost encompasses what the movie is. Mm-hmm. Weird, wacky, and bloody. Yeah, right. Because you have a giant shark man tearing another man in half. Yeah, literally. Right, like L- long way. Right. <laughs> Like, like, no, people get torn in half, legs and head, not, but no, not down the middle. Right? I think, yeah, that was just, it was just such a cool shot. Yeah. And then having them all fight again. Um, I like, sorry, in the rain when they're walking. Yeah. I love that Harley's eating an apple. Like, that's just super chill and relaxed. Yeah. You're literally walking into, like, And that's where you zone. get to see, see, see more of those looks between Flag and Harley. Yeah, that's right? my favorite right there. Right, where they're just. It's like, it's adorable. Yeah. You know, they're just so chill. Like, Flag looks so happy. Yeah. Um, when they start shooting them, Flag, the shotgun the Flag uses just rips through those two guys. Oh, it's yeah. Like, you get that brutal. Sh- right? The, the hole. hole yeah. between two people. Right. They fall apart. The hole breaks. Like So I like when they open the door and... Um, Peacemaker just slams Thinker's head into the into the retina scanner. <laughs> like, A few times. How is that helpful? Right. <laughs> It was quite funny. So. It was interesting because then they start setting up all their bombs and stuff. It was yeah. so adorable to see um, King Shark. In that way? Yeah, trying to like be like, you know, Peacemaker. He's so cute. Peacemaker's such a douche about well, he's, it. He's like, because you could see in that moment, that's where he, he realized he was going to have to probably do his secondary mission. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I noticed that this time when I was watching it. Mm. He, it's the idea where he's like... He keeps looking over his shoulder, all like cagey, like mm. right, and he's like he's looking, and like because he so he knows says, now this is where it's going to split off. He's like because he says he doesn't trust the thinker. He, he yeah. wants to stick with him, right? Like he's he's watching, yeah, right. So then I think he, that's why because he goes from being like okay with King Shark and being like okay, it's a really nice gesture, and then he gets frustrated, right? Well, and so the other thing too is the fact that he he didn't he couldn't have said well no I want to go with you guys down with a thinker or anything. Yeah. It was just like, well, he was assigned to this task and yeah. set up the bombs and he had to go with it. So that would have been a difficult thing because he would have had to now position himself into what he needed to do and not raise flags over why he couldn't do what Bloodsport told him to. Right. So. So I thought it was an interesting, like, you mm-hmm. know, especially then when you get to see everything that the thinker's been doing, you see, like, the atrocities. And, oh, like, yeah. He's so gleeful about it. Like... <laughs> The ter- like all the all the people Frankenstein's laboratory yeah. where what it's so horrible the one that's got ripped off its face and it's like trying to still talk to the human yeah. but it's being held up above it yeah. and it's all oh my god like seeing so that concept though that seals the deal that once those things stick onto you you're dead, you're dead. because it it melts your face basically yeah and like and he's right or wrong I mean it's it's a good commentary though what he says the idea that the the government in general and this is obviously the US government but in any of those any governments don't want to admit that they've done dirty things and you know they're all high and mighty now they want to erase it when there's a possible risk of blowback for them but they were oh okay with funding it as long as it wasn't on soil yeah. and somehow that is you know washes their hands of it yeah. as long as it's not on their because they can do this matters, they just right? send a black ops team erase right? it and then never existed and it's just so sad like it's it's definitely a rabbit hole of things to question right. about what has happened right um and you know it's it's the idea that of it's like oh of course we have waller is still the bad guy yeah yep because <laughs> nothing she's doing in this moment is actually good yeah right she's not trying to save people she's just trying to cover up their own tracks yeah 
You know, they say that it's the idea of trying to save Americans, but all it really is, is they wouldn't care. I, it sounds bad, but they wouldn't care if Americans died as long as they knew for sure that they couldn't be blamed for it. Yeah. If they could 100% confirm that they could blame another government for it, well, which that's, is what that's, that's the point what happens, of it, right? Once Starro gets out, she's like, I don't care as long as Jotunheim's destroyed yeah. and the data's And then they gone. could just blow up that island. They'd probably nuke the island and yeah. they'd be able to blame Corto Maltese for it and everything would be fine. Yeah. But it, it, they're going to say they want to protect American lives, but it's just they want to protect their own cover, right? Yeah. And... Yeah, it's a whole other level of scary to think about, right? Right, so. like it's it's a trip. Yeah. Um, then we get uh, King Shark and his special little friends too. Those things are so creepy. Uh huh. Like they're so like... adorable until they're not. Right, they and attack. They're him. So vicious. They're so savage. They, you said they look like little finger puppets. Yeah, I decided I was looking at them floating they're, around. They're like, like those little ones you would have gotten. The little yeah, you put them the little plastic things on there when you get at like the dentist. Yeah, when you were a kid, like those yeah. little like finger puppet things. Yeah. That's what they remind me of. But then you know they'd actually be eating your fingertips. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> Um, that's where you get to actually see, cal- uh, I, yeah, you know, I'm saying calendar man, not polka dot man. Right? Polka dot man. Um, melt a guy. Melt a guy. Actually, Milton, a couple guys. Milton gets, uh, shot. <laughs> and then, uh, then he sets off the bomb and you get to see how, also how loose his power is though, right? Like, yeah. and I thought that was kind of cool Because they see. float so much. Yeah, they go away. He has no real control. He just has a direction. He's just releasing them. Yeah. Yeah. He can just kind of force a direction and then they do what they do. It's almost like he has a fan where yeah. he's sending them off. And yeah. I think, you know, when he did, was it when the very beginning when he, he released them, um, well, you know, they kind of, they just float and settle and yeah. they're just like, la la la. Dust in the wind. Yeah. Um, That's where it, where it goes. But yeah, they so. just melted, and then it, I love how Harley realized just a moment too late. Wait a second, those are also you know gonna light something on fire. Yeah, well, know? he does it so quick, right? Yeah, and so, he's trying so hard. Like you don't blame him at all. He's just trying to help. Yeah, and uh, sets off all the bombs. Yeah, nothing like setting off all that C four. <laughs> right. Um, but it was interesting to watch all the the all the followed, especially when Flag realized that they were you know experimenting on kids and stuff like that and yeah. like he was like no i'm i played the good soldier long enough and then that's when peacemaker had to come in yeah. and that fight is so brutal like, that's that's what gave me good uh like even more respect for him how he held yeah. his, he holds his own so long oh yeah because because peacemaker's a big guy yeah and he's just like you know, just back and forth and they're so bloody yeah. both of them and Those beat the shit when but the one thing I did think I noticed more this time watching it because it, it breaks my heart when Peacemaker flips because like he he seems like a genuine like okay dude he's crazy mm-hmm. but then in in that moment where he is following orders and he's stuck following orders when he's given orders that are supposedly for peace he it's so been beaten into him he's that, single minded on it yeah but when he has to kill Flag I noticed it a lot more this watch. Uh, how sad and almost like he almost starts crying. He looks right? very regretful about yeah. it. It's like, why did you make me have to do that? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. and then, but then the moment he sees that rat catcher gets to drive, then that switch hits again and it's emissions on again. Yeah. It's like, right? okay, well that's done. Now I've got to move on to my next problem. Right. And, and like, he really can't answer her when she says, why do you have to kill me? The drive's right there. Just take it. And it's just, I'm thorough. I like that. Right. He takes a moment to answer. Yeah. Too. It's like, well, I have to think of a reason as to why I would have to kill her that fits into the narrative that it's for peace and it's not just because I want to kill you. Yeah. He can't just say that. Yeah. He has to think of a reason why he has to kill her for peace. Yeah. And and the uh, being, idea of being thorough fits into the narrative. Yeah. Making sure there's no loose ends and questions about things not being done. Yeah. You know? Um, I had a moment where I'm like, well, why when when Bloodsport falls down there, why he doesn't kill Ratcatcher and then try to kill Bloodsport? Because but he knows it's his own safety. He mm-hmm. wouldn't have time to kill both of them. Yeah. You know, so and he sees Bloodsport as a bigger threat. Yeah, he would. You know, Ratcatcher you know, is definitely more. Well, she didn't have her her weapon. Yeah. So he would have been if he'd been able to kill Bloodsport. He'd he would be have able to kill her. No problem. Yeah. So. so. Um. But yeah, that's still it's still pretty bloody. Like I'm, I'm really surprised that he's able to survive this. Yeah, right? like 
Um, definitely. Because not only was he getting shot, was he actually was the still building. in the building with the collapse yeah. and all the chaos. Because they say in the the final scene, like he's all busted up and broken, and you know, he's yeah. gonna be so. I'd be curious to see. Like, I'm really excited for the Peacemaker series. I'm ser- curious where that's gonna go and how yeah. that's gonna play out. Yeah. Um, how they're gonna. Are they going to try to redeem the character a bit more? Like, or is he going to be the same same, same way? Yeah, so. it'd be hard if you had a whole ongoing series of him like that to really like him. Yeah, too much, right? It could get real old real Repetitive, quick. Repetitive, yeah. So I'm assuming it's going to be more of a redemption. He's going to become more of a hero. Um, back to Bloodsport falling down through the building as it's collapsing. I would <laughs> like to know how his knees landed safely. Safely. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. It's the superhero landing. Because I looked at that and I'm like, uh, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. It's the suspension of disbelief for yeah. really, the, um, the action that's happening. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. So when uh, King Shark falls out and they all, he just, he totally looks like, like suddenly he's that fish out of water feel. Yeah. You know, he looks kind of dead and they're just like shooting the hell out of him this poor thing he made friends everything's happy they then he gets to eat he, him tried to be eaten and then he gets shot all thrown the out hell. a window and i was just so happy when he killed that guy yeah and, and he just starts chewing on it just, reminds me of a dog yeah he's just chewing on a head now yeah and i was just, just like yeah fuck you that. guys like he tried to try to kill him and they have every right to i understand but it was just like you felt so bad for him yeah like because he, 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 overall, he wasn't really vicious. It was more like the animal thing. He was hungry. Yep. Like, he wasn't just randomly. Otherwise, he would have just been attacking every single person that crossed his path. Yeah. Right? So. I think that's the thing that's kind of cool, though, with um, when Star Wars finally breaks out. Mm-hmm. You get the, the, the squad finally decides to fight back. Oh, right. real quick with Starro, one thing I liked was when then he, he broke out and pulled and grabbed the finger. Mm-hmm. There wasn't anything drawn out about it. Mm-hmm. It was just, I'm going to destroy you. Yeah. It, there was no reason for him to think about it or talk yeah. more, but it was not going to, I'm not going to tell you why I'm mad at you. I'm not going to explain anything else. I'm just going to fucking kill you. Yeah. And he was just a puddle of goo on the window. And right. That was it. That's insane force. When you right. Think about that. And it was just done. Yeah. And it was like a certain amount of efficiency that I appreciated. Right. Well, it <laughs> so, is the wild animal just going for it. Yeah. Um, but one thing I thought was uh, with it was that when they finally get there, like they have their Avengers moment, right? Yes. Where like they're all there and they're finally going to do it. And he and blood for sport gets his like, you know, you Harley high ground. Yeah. You know, um, Namu way. No, no, no way. King know, shark. No, no, no. Right. No, like, noms. Right. And, you know, and then Calum ran, it's your mother, right? Like, yeah. And it was, was like, cool to see him fall well, into that here, role, yeah. right? Um, and there's a, there's a bit of when Calum ran, ah, why? Right? Why am I, I was like, maybe it's because it's so late. Albert? Albert? Retired. It's, it's late. It's yeah. close to midnight. Poke it up, man. Poke it up, man. Um, he... He's so happy that he's finally being a superhero because he's melting sorrow. I feel so proud of him. He's so happy, but it's so sad when he gets squashed. I'm but at the same hero. time, there's like that moment of like, you know, your job's done. Like you've done something like he died happy and thinking that he died he a hero, died a hero. He died using his curse, quite honestly, yeah. for something positive. Yeah. You know, so um, it's good to see that he actually had the ability to to be happy because yeah. he was so unhappy the entire well, and time you know what when you look at him it's like he was Tortured. if he was a villain it was because he was created yeah um by mass amounts of trauma and something forced upon him that he didn't ask for yeah. you know um and i a lot of it is he wouldn't have been able to control it he can't control that these things are no. d- um so destructive yeah and other than just killing himself, what was he supposed to have done? Right. You know, so he was now, this is why that it's almost that, that positive aspect of having the suicide squad is being able to use them and find positive ways to use their abilities. Yeah. Right. In a constructive manner. And, uh, so yeah, so it was such a, a sad, but happy death. You felt so, you know, sad, but that he's at peace Yeah, and he, he died happy doing something positive and and 
yeah, that was... And even with Flag, when he died, though, he died doing for something he stood up for. He was for. noble, right? He yeah, was, he was exactly. trying to, to out them, right? Yeah. So. so I know I know Flag didn't get his wish of getting the media to know because Bloodsport got to use it as yeah, leverage. Yeah, leverage, right? But, you know. But who knows? Still, it'll come up at some point. Right. It's still there. So, um, yeah, they definitely Starro being as imagined as um, the giant mom was terrifying. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it, Definitely brought some light to that moment yeah. of it, like, ripping through his fly, like, you know. Right. So, um, let's talk about the giant waves of rats. That was terrifying, because yeah. I don't like mice and rodents, so, so I... You could really, you know, I, I feel relate for to, Blood to Bloodsport. Yeah. 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 Um, and as I say, that was the moment where I felt very emotional. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't believe that I was, like, somewhat crying over something like that. Right? But it's so brutal as those rats tear through sorrow. <sighs> And right. back now we're back to the nobule ball sack looking yeah, things, right? right? Full circle. Full circle. Um, I love Harley's like sudden realizing what she has the the spear for, right? And you know the fact that she just dives into his eyeball without even questioning. And I was really afraid that they were going to kill Harley. Yeah, I was full on expecting that. Well, and with was... how the movie was going, with how many people had died, I was expecting them to oh, yeah. clear house of like that original. Yeah, I'm like how could right? she survive this, yeah. right? Um, At that point, I was like, you know, it feels like if Isabel, she had died, it would have been okay. Ajaba was like the only one that was going to make it out because they had given him that human connection of a daughter. Yeah, I was like, no one else had a connection outside. Yeah, I was like waiting for everyone else to just, and it only been him to come out of it. Yeah, um, but she said she would get him out alive. So yeah, you know. Um, but then when those rats, they did, they didn't even question. They infiltrated so damn quickly. Oh, yeah. Um, holy crap. And then just tore the thing apart, dug into its brain and it's eating just the insides and everything like that. Like absolutely crazy and scary. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty intense. So, you know, all in all, I love the movie. I, I, a second watch, I laughed. Yeah. I still still enjoyed it. I had a great friggin' time with it. And I think that's. Something that's really uh, spectacular yeah. with it. Um, and I really can't wait to watch it again. Yeah, exactly. Right. But I was like, super excited with the movie that um, when the figures came out from McFarlane mm-hmm. uh, and I was able to get them from Toy Traders, I was like super excited to go down and get them. Oh, yeah. I really, really like that. Um, and you'll see some shots showing up on Instagram because when we went camping, I was able to take them camping. Yeah, he got them just in time to be able to take them for camping, which was really awesome. Yeah. And I really, really love them. I am disappointed, though, because I posted those reels, that I wish that, that WB hadn't pulled weapons on them because I'm really sad that Peacemaker and Bloodsport don't have their weapons. Well, because even watching the movie again, too, it's like there's so much I of their want Bloodsport's beings. guns. Right? Like, it's the weirdest thing. I've seen people make them, yeah. but they're really expensive, and I understand because you got to do that for your you, what you're doing because they're you know yeah but uh I'm, I'm really happy with the figures like i really really am happy and i hope that rat catcher 2 and flag come out because that would be nice to have them as the full team yeah so well, they're so integral to it right and yeah i really like both of their characters and so it makes sense so. exactly but yeah i love this movie so much i like, i really do like james gunn's work and where he's going i can't wait to see what else he's going to do in the future for sure I'm still hoping he does a Toxic Crusaders because especially watching this again with Cal- really with uh, Polka Dot Man. <laughs> ah, Polka Dot Man. Apparently, by the way, we need a Calendar Man. Uh... Ballooning out of his head. Um, I really, I really think that that uh, I saw a Toxie in that, right? Yeah. So. Oh, one thing I talked to uh, Jesse when we were doing it and we, we realized that a, another Suicide Squad movie should take place in Cordo Maltese and it should be done Predator style. Oh, where okay. they have to oh, go yes. back and they have to figure out what's what's this like chupacabra in the bush is doing and and instead of like the squad dying so fast like the squad gets picked off one by one like the predator movie yeah. only to find out that it was weasel all along that's <laughs> my sequel pitch alive that's my sequel pitch <laughs> The weasel, the weasel predator movie. The weasel survived. Yeah. And he's, he's like a chupacabra out there. Yep. And then well, yeah, when he came back, to... I'm like, he's fucking chupacabra in the forest yeah. right now. Like, he's that's little, what's like, going to happen. A little wah. Oh, God, he's so creepy. They need to make him as a toy. Yeah. I think we said that before. <gasps> I always wanted to meet a werewolf. Right. 
But yes, um, I love the squad, and uh, it was fantastic. As you can tell, we, we just... have spent a lot of time talking about this. Kiddo commented, he's like, it's been a long time since you've actually like loved a movie like yeah. this. And he can tell, so. I, yeah, total blast with it. So yeah. I'm glad that we got to do it again. And I'm excited we got to talk about it again and talk about it in depth yeah. um, more. So thank you for listening, and stay rad, dudes. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.